Good morning, everyone. I am trying to get a stable connection for my phone. And also not have it fall over the place. Well, I might not be able to do that. Just one sec. Okay, so I'm also going to bring this up on my laptop screen so that I can see you guys. And I would love to hear where everybody is from this morning. If you can type that in the comments box, I would love to hear that. And we will get started in just a minute. We just want to make sure everybody has a chance to get logged in properly. So, I am going to click this here. There. So, I don't see any comments yet. I would love to hear. I see that there are 10 of you, 11 of you that are logged in this morning. And I would love to hear where you're from. I don't see any comments yet. I would love to hear. I see that there are. Sorry, I got to turn the volume off on my laptop so you don't hear me twice. So oh, how's everybody? Hey, Leon, how you doing? I would love to know where everybody's from, where everybody's tuning in from this morning. That would be really awesome. My camera is, is very sad. Okay, we'll deal with it like this. I was trying to keep it charged for you. Okay, so my name's Jody. And uh, welcome to the first edition of Design Works Wednesdays with Jody. And today we are going to be making postcards with bubble painting for um, a little bit of connection during isolation. I see we have 17 people. Heather, Bird's Corner, good morning. Good morning, for PEI, another Heather. That's awesome. Debec, you're not far away. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some of the samples that I have made, and then we're gonna go through the materials. The materials are, they should be really easy to come by, and if they're not easy to come by, we have a lot of substitutions for you. Is everybody hearing me okay? Good morning, Jessica in Florenceville. Hey, Krista, how are you? Is Isabel joining you this morning, Krista? So I'm going to show you some of the samples that we have made and I apologize for the spoiler alert if you're some of my family and you're gonna get some of these cards, but it's the price you have to pay for creativity. So this is a really cool one and this is, um, this is one we're going to work on today and really, really littles can do this. Just as a, a note, a white crayon is what does that. So if you want to dig out a white crayon, that will really help you um, to make any kind of messages or images uh, on the underside of your painting. This one is not done with a white crayon, but done with a white pen, gel roller. We have some florals. This is for the gardener in your life. My daughter made one. And then we just have some blank cards that we haven't dealt with yet, but we are going to deal with that a little bit later. So, I'm gonna reach over here to my very fancy workspace. It's a chair beside the table. I need you to remember that I'm also in isolation. So I have tried some alternatives to these art materials that um, maybe if you don't have paint, you can 
still participate. Even roll this back later. We're going to save this and post it to the page so that if you want to do this again or your kids want to do it again once they've gone through it one time, they can roll back the video and, and uh, do it again. So I have tried, if you don't have watercolor paper, don't, it's cool. Chill out. This is the tab of a cereal box that I tested. Worked really, really great. Can totally be a postcard. This is actually a box tab from, you know, any regular cardboard box. It works pretty well as well. This is the back side of Bristol board. I took a project that my son had done uh, at school and he was all done with it. Now, the important thing to notice is if, if you are going to do this, because it works and you've got lots of materials, there's a coated side to Bristol board and then there's a matte side to Bristol board. We use the matte side so that the uh, paint could, could grab on. And then I did this little test. So I don't know how well you can see me here. If you can't see me, please tell me. Good morning, Layla. I'm glad you love the carrot. Maybe you can make a carrot too, Layla. So up here is just a tea made with a couple bags in about a half a cup of water. This is coffee. Coffee didn't uh, take the bubbles very well. It did stain, but it didn't take the bubbles. And this is food coloring. So if you're totally down and out and you haven't got, um, haven't got any paint with you, good morning. Sarah in Nova Scotia. Good morning, Victoria. So the food coloring will work and actually it looks really, really cool. So do not despair. Don't think I don't have all the perfect art supplies. Although if you want the perfect art supplies, I know that the good folks at Endeavors are more than help, happy to help you. They're, uh, they're sending so many packages and I'm seeing uh, Instagram and Facebook filled with uh, deliveries of their the art elves are sending them from uh, from endeavors and keeping them in the creative loop so I am going to start with watercolor paper uh, this is just watercolor paper from the dollar store that I'm using it's a smaller sheet and it's only about 90 pounds but that's okay that's what we're using and it makes a great postcard so I want you to make sure that you have a straw. You need a shallow dish with water in it and your dish soap. Now, I have a little trick with dish soap, especially moms, dads, guardians, grandmas, grandpas, whoever is looking after you. I put an unpaper towel or a dish towel or face cloth, anything underneath where kids or adults, because I do it too, uh, are blowing bubbles because there tends to be some bubble shrapnel sometimes and this just helps the mess stay down. Uh, I have several different kinds of watercolor paint. My watercolor paint is liquid and I just use this tray over and over and just rehydrate it. This is what most of you probably have is a pan watercolor set and I'm going to show you how to use this so you get the best use out of your watercolors. And I have another one of the liquid watercolor um, sets available. I have a little tiny jar that I reuse and an eyedropper. Eyedropper is really handy, but you don't have to have it. Don't panic at all. If you don't have it, you can use a little teaspoon. You can just put water in, uh, in the end of your straw, really. You can just put water in the end of your straw and hydrate your paint. That'll work too. Uh, I mentioned the white crayon before and I have two different brushes. They're not fancy, but they're my faves. And I have some black pens and some white pens for later on when we do the drawing portion of the program. So if you're doing this with me, a Sharpie will work, a black pen will work. It, what you've got will work. So we, we just want you to be able to create and make something really cool that you can send to a relative and let them know that you're still thinking of them even though you can't be close right now. Uh, I have one little trick up my sleeve and it's, 
it's a little higher end. This is a heat gun to help the paint dry. But if you don't have that, you can totally use a uh, hairdryer and, and just speed this process up because you're going to do several layers of bubbles on one sheet and your paper is going to get like really soggy. So I suggest that you do two or three at a time so that you can kind of rotate and trust me, once your kids start making bubbles, they're just, it's going to be a thing. They'll, they'll be really excited about this. Lisa asks, if we don't have a white pen, will whiteout pen work? Sure would. A whiteout pen would totally work. You don't even have to have the white pen. That's just what I'm using. Everybody is, we're going to work with what we got this morning. But uh, optimally, that's what we have. Uh, that's a good question, Lisa. Thank you for asking that. Good morning, Catherine. Okay, so we're going to start, I believe, the first thing I'm going to show you, Quinn, do you want to say hi? Quinn's my helper. You want to come over here? Hi. This is my daughter, Quinn, and she is in charge of keeping my water clean this morning. Big jobs. Big jobs. So, I'm going to show you, I'm going to move this water, uh, this paper, sorry. I'm going to show you how to use um, a watercolor palette. So, I grab a little bit of water. And when you have um, these pans, a lot of people just use them just like this and then they get all messed up and everything turns brown. But uh, I'm going to unleash the magic. So I'm going to put a little bit of water in there and just let them chill. And with your paintbrush, I'm going to just rearrange things for myself here. With your paintbrush, you're just going to kind of gently finesse it so that you'll start seeing pigment pick up and it'll get milky. And when you start seeing the pigment swirl around and be very solid, that's when you're ready. Now I'm going to try and show you. I think I have to pull back some. That's when you're ready, you just kind of use this like a mop this is a mop mop and put it over someplace else you can put it on a plate you can put it this conveniently has uh, recesses in the cover that we can use you just mop a little up and then you work from here that way you never actually mess up your real um, your pigment pan so I'm gonna do the same thing with this rose color and don't think that once this dries up that it's no more good. You can use watercolor over and over and over. It has to be the most environmentally friendly paint because it's just never done. You can just keep rehydrating and using again over and over again. So I have some of this rosy color. Um, these are metallics. Uh, that I got from Endeavors. You probably don't have metallics. You probably have a primary set, likely with the name Prang uh, on the outside of them. And those are, those are great too. We have a lot of those here. But same situation, there's actually recesses in the cover that you can put your paint so that you don't mess up your pans. And then you've always got nice clean color for the next time that you do an art project. Can you use acrylic paint, Heather asked? You certainly can. If you water it down enough, you can use acrylic paint. I, I actually have used uh, acrylic just recently to, to do a test on canvas, and um, it, it worked great. Uh, the only thing about acrylic, you need to water it down really, really well because uh, it, it'll make like a ridge. So if you are going to follow along with us today and draw on top of it. Um, it'll be a little hard going to, to draw over top of it, but beyond that, yeah, go ahead, do it. What if you don't have watercolor paint? Okay, so if you don't have watercolor paint, you can use tea, uh, use two or three tea bags and about a half a cup of tea. That'll steep really strong, you can try that. 
Food coloring works pretty well too. I actually have a sample. Thank you, Quinn. She's my Vanna White today. This is food coloring right here. And it, it worked really well. Um, and the, the box type, if you don't have watercolor paper, it, uh, we can substitute that for almost anything. The only thing that I really wouldn't suggest is just like plain old printer paper because it'll tear through and get soggy really, really quickly on you and that's, that's frustrating. So we are going to set this aside and we're going to get some water in my other colors so that I can go to town here. And Quinn, if you could get me some of the paints, because I think I'm running out. Okay. We're just going to hydrate all of our paints. You can do the same with me. Maybe you've already done it, and you're like, Jody, get it together, girl. It's not true. We need to have all the colors hydrated, because we don't know how creativity is going to strike us. Okay, so we'll set these up. And I have some Martha Stewart things that I switch out as well so that I can be a little quicker than you, but you are more than welcome to work as you go and work at your own pace. So I have my straw. I'm gonna bring this over so you can see my glamorous bubble blowing. Now, warning, kids, don't blow too hard. This isn't your chocolate milk. We are trying to make a mushroom like a muffin on top, okay? And this is the point ruler. We've lost a ruler this morning. Cool. So this is the point when you figure out if you've got too much soap and you need a little more water or if you, if your bubbles just flatten really, really quickly, um, you need a little more soap. So we have dropped a ruler this morning somewhere. Oh, I found it. So I'm going to recondition my muffin. And I'm gonna take my ruler, but you don't have to use a ruler, and just scrape the bubbles off. So, I then am going to grab some pigment, and this is where the magic happens. I like this like mop-like brush because the bubbles actually pull the pigment away. And it's really, really cool to have a friend working with you so one can blow bubbles and one can um, one can do the pigment and you can take turns I was telling the UNB Art Center yesterday that we've had this set up for a few days at our house and I frequently just hear bubbles being blown because my son has just come out to, to just blow a few bubbles just to see, make sure everything's still working. Now, when you have the frothy bubbles, they take, you can just kind of wipe over them and they pull the pigments. Then this is where magic happens. You can put two colors inside the same set of bubbles and the bubbles will mix the paint for you. And then you look like you're an expert in making gradients and we're not gonna tell anybody that the bubbles did it for you. You're magic. Oh, if I miss that, Leon is asking me what the bubble mixture is. I thought I told you, I did not. This, I have a little baby bottle of Dawn and um, Quinn is taking my water to get clean because she's very diligent at that. So I just have this um, water and a little drizzle of Dawn. If you don't have enough dish soap in, your bubbles will flatten really, really quickly. But 
Um, this is actually normal. What I have going on here is this tiny suds, just like what happens in your dishwater, the little suds that are remnants after, but they eventually deplete down. And so I already have some results here, which is like super cool. I love, 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 love how this looks. So I'm going to continue with the cool colors. How's everybody doing? A little hard to see. Am I too, is it too light maybe where I am? Is it too bright, Leon? Let's see if I can get a little bit of curtain. I'm just going to test it again. How's, is that better? I need some feedback. Is that better? Much better. Okay, cool. Thank you, Marie. I was trying to be well lit and make sure that you guys could see, but apparently the sun is coming in that window too hard. So we have our mushroom muffin top. Scrape it over. And uh, this time I think I'm gonna go in with a turquoise color. Thank you, Karen. Are you doing this along with us? I'm glad that you like it. This is so much fun. So before I chose like a midnight blue and then a yellow over top of that and it made this really cool green color and I'm going to try the yellow um, in amongst this uh, turquoise color. And I just keep going around and around the page to uh, to give myself space and let those bubbles burst and and uh, do their thing. Don't think that you are ever going to be able to predict these bubbles. The bubbles are the boss. It's acceptable, Karen, that you're just watching. Hi, Stephanie. We are going to um, blow some bubbles. You just logged in. We were going to blow some bubbles and then we're adding pigment to them. So I just have a shallow dish here, like a Rubbermaid dish, and it's full of dish soap and water. And we're taking a paintbrush and injecting hope that you can see that because it looks really cool from where I am. I'm going to put a little red with the with the purple just cuz cuz that's fun. How's everybody doing? Now, I really, really, I can't see you guys. I would really, really love to um, to be able to see what you created because this is kind of foreign to me. Usually I'm in a classroom with anybody that I'm teaching, but we, we deal with it as it comes. So if when you're done, I would love to see what you created. If you post it back on the UNB Facebook page, I would be thrilled to see them. I would love to see what you make.
Don't be jealous. I know I look amazing while I'm blowing bubbles. So I'm going to move over to this one because there's kind of a, a lighter blue in this palette that I have. I'm glad you're having fun, Megan. I can see there'll be a report next week of this big surge of postcards going through the Canada Post. Uh, also, I want to mention the standard size for a postcard is four inches by six inches. So in, um, I hadn't mentioned it yet, but in your supplies, you're going to need scissors. I have a paper cutter. You don't have to have a paper cutter. You have, if you have a ruler and some scissors, then you're all set. See, the cloth is doing me well because I have just spilled bubbles on the table, but it didn't make a mess because I was prepared. Uh, there's actually, Gary, there's a fairly high concentration of bubbles of uh, dish soap in here, probably like a teaspoon in that um, little container. Uh, I will tell you, I did test, I at my house I usually use the um, the Down East Soap Company um, stuff that's made in Halifax that's biodegradable and very environmentally friendly. Uh, the bubbles didn't last as long because there's not as many sulfates in them. So unfortunately, this is one of those projects that's not totally clean. But, um, but if Dawn is, you know, clean enough to wash a baby duck, it's... It's got to be good enough for us. Lori asks, can you describe again how you put the pigment in the brush and how they apply? I sure can. Okay, so I'm going to make some bubbles and I'll just go through that. So first we make our bubbles. You can also go back in and just blow air in the bubbles and you'll get um, bigger pockets if you want to try and manipulate them that way. So I grab my watercolor paint. I'm actually going to pull it over here so you can maybe see it a little bit better. Grab my watercolor paint and it's fairly liquid and I just inject it into the bubble. Let me just move this out of the way. So you just drop it in. You can also kind of roll your paintbrush over the sides of the little suds and uh, it will pick up. I feel like Elsa, just kind of painting the bubbles. I'm looking over my shoulder because I can't read the comments on this on this screen. I have to look over my shoulder to the laptop to see them. So if I seem distracted, I'm not. I'm, I'm making sure that you guys don't have questions. If you have questions, if there's something that you need to know that I'm going too fast, tell me. I will slow down and we'll do it again. Some purple 
and whoops, I dropped some on the table. That's okay. Thank you, Gwen. Can I hold it up higher? Tex is interfering. Okay, sure, I can. How's that? I have added water to my paint, uh, Karen, to make it runny. Um, when when you uh, hydrate your pans, you can you just add some water in it with a water dropper or a paintbrush or the top of a straw or whatever, and just let it sit and pull it away. And then you actually add more and more water to it and um, make it really quite liquidy. To, uh, to be the right viscosity to, to grab on to the bubbles. in Markham, Ontario, joining us this morning. So the really cool part about this is uh, when each layer dries, you can go over it and then you just get bubbles and bubbles and bubbles over the bubbles and bubbles and bubbles and then you get really really cool effects and uh, it also mixes really well too I will need new water in a minute I'm gonna put I'm just gonna put a little bit of fuchsia in here just cuz just cuz fun I am going to blow one more set of bubbles on this one. I'm glad you're having fun, Layla. So, do do do. This is yellow, so it might be a little bit more difficult to see than the others. The other cool thing about watercolor, even though it's it's meant to be um, very translucent, when you add the layers like this, the yellow will show up on top of the other colors. So you have this whole like microbiology look. As you go you can see that your your bubbles will burst and they make different patterns as they um, as they burst which is also really cool because you go oh it busted but oh it's even better than I thought and you can just as I just did you just drop the color in 
and it will mix by itself. The bubbles will suck it in and do their work. So I am going to set this one aside that I've been working on. You guys have probably been going back and forth between a couple to make it not soggy. I have one that I started a little bit yesterday just as a tester. I'm gonna do a little more work on that as well to fill it up. Again, I would really, really love um, to see what, you're, uh, what you've completed. It takes probably about, um, probably 10 to 15 minutes to really, really dry well on its own. But if you give it that little help from the, uh, from the hairdryer, which I'm actually gonna do now that it's been mentioned, Lucinda says thanks for the tip about the yellow. She's been avoiding using yellow thinking that it wouldn't show up. It does. It is magic. Also those those uh, small prang watercolors, I believe that they have a white gouache in them as well and the white will show up as well. Trying to keep this up high so you guys can see. Hi, William. William is joining us from Oromocto this morning. Good morning, Tracy. We're just gonna brush these little foamy bubbles that you're like, oh, it didn't work. No, it works so good, actually. It's the exact opposite of what you think. It makes these all these really cool little bubbles all over the place. It's really awesome. Bubble blow out. I'm going to put a little more green on this one. When I started this yesterday, you know what? The sun has moved again. There, is that better? Can you see a little bit better again? Whoops, I dripped on my page. That's okay, it's all gorgeous. There are no mistakes here. This is a Bob Ross day. Okay, so I am going to pull out the heat tool and dry off these pages to speed things up. I apologize for the sound. It's gonna sound like you're in a wind tunnel for a minute. dry the other one that I had set aside which is actually doing pretty well in the sun it's a little damp still but it's only been about six minutes where did 
did I get the heat gun? I've had this heat gun for 140 years, but I would bet dollars to donuts that um, Luke and Tyler at the at Endeavors would be able to help you. Um, this is, yeah, I've had this since before I even moved to Woodstock and I don't care to extend you how long that's been. It's been a very long time since I've lived here. We're gonna dry this one too. Lynn asks, uh, would this work good on a canvas? I have actually used this on a can. Actually, if my lovely assistant, it, the painting is just around the corner, let's, uh, we will make room to show you. And I have done this on a canvas and it works quite nicely. Now, uh, you'll see there's some areas here. I think my computer's just unplugged. Um, there's some areas here where it draws in. The gesso allows the watercolor to float a little bit more, and then you get smaller areas of bubbles. So just to be warned, but it does work. Thank you, Quinn. have to imagine that everybody's house sounds like that right now if, if everybody is um, using hair dryer so maybe it's not as distracting as I think da, da, da. my apron is falling off me so I'm going this was the last page on this particular pad so I'm going to take it off And throw that aside. Actually, um, we had some people that joined a little bit later, and I'm going to show you some of the alternatives that we did, um, just in case you don't have art supplies at your house, but we, we have you covered. That, that's cool. Okay, so if you don't have watercolor paper, this is a box top that we use just from a cereal box. This is a piece of Bristol board. It's the back side. This is the front side and it has a coating on it. That won't work. But the back side is not coated and it works quite nicely. Um, this here is a regular old, like the ear tab off of uh, Amazon box. Works, works very well. And then uh, alongside of different mediums used for laying down, we, I tested um, a few different things that you might have in your house. This is tea, and you can see that I did get some bubbles. If you use about three tea bags in a half a cup of tea, it will steep down and make a, a pretty decent mix. This is coffee. Maybe my coffee was weak that morning. I don't know, but it didn't accept any bubbles. It did just make a wash. This is food coloring. So, actually, on the back side of this... I'm going to show you something because I promised it and I didn't tell you. I'm a bad teacher. Your white crayon. Your white crayon will serve as a watercolor resist. So I am just going to draw, and you need to press pretty firm to do this. So little hands might need some help. But I am going to uh, use what's available to me. I'm just going to use the back side of this page and show you. And I broke my crayon. She's wrote off now. She's wrote. That's okay. Away we go. So, more bubbles. Just to show you how this works.
My daughter's off to the side taking a picture of me. I don't know if she's telling her friend what her crazy mom is doing in the morning. This is what my mom does for fun. I'm sure it has a great caption on it somewhere. She has a sheepish grin. I'm not wrong. So as you um, get a fair amount of pigment on this page, you'll see that what you drew will remain there in white. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Oh, I think I recognize Karen. Okay, so I'm just going to speed this up a little bit with the heat gun again because I want to get to the drawing part of the program. Now, I only did two passes, so it's not totally saturated, but you see where I drew a heart? And it works, uh, Works pretty good. So, I am going to show you how to cut. I have this very fancy device that you do not need in any way, but you certainly can use. I'm also going to put a bug in your ear that there are going to be extras when you cut off of here. I would request that you would save those because we have some projects coming up that would be, it would be really, really useful for you to have those scraps. So, um, four inches wide, for each postcard, that's what the post office likes. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to save it. And six inches long. I'm going to save this too. Sandra asks, how much soap do you use? I um, didn't really measure, but I'm going to say that there's probably a half a teaspoon of soap in this little... Um, this Rubbermaid tub. Everybody has one of those. They're food storage containers. Um, this is how you measure it because it could differ depending on the um, the pH factor of your water. So if you have harder water, you're going to need more soap. Um, but if you make the bubbles and put them on the page and they deflate immediately, you need more soap. That's, that's all. So save this little piece. And we are going to clean this up. And now I'm going to get out my pens to start drawing. So I have these little babies. You are, you can use just a ballpoint pen. This will totally work for you. I'm going to show you what my favorites are. Um, again, uh, these are these are artist materials, but these are not expensive artist materials. So if you would like to um, explore these a little bit, these are great. So these are Micron pens. They come in a lot of different thicknesses and uh, I use them for a few different reasons. One, super versatile, and they write on almost anything. Two, they come in a whole bunch of size um, ranges. They have, I think there's seven or eight different sizes, and this one here is a brush tip pen, so you can make fancy. Uh, and the other thing is that they're waterproof. So those are three great reasons. I believe that these are a grand old prize of $3.99 at Endeavor. So they're not... Um, they're not an expensive tool, but they certainly are a useful tool. So this is what I use, but you can certainly use an Inkjoy pen or a ballpoint stick pen. If that'll work too for right now. If that's what you got, use it. Yes, you totally can get these pens at Endeavors. Um, then I have two different versions and both have been bought at Endeavors. 
I, I know that we have, as I see, we have a lot of people here that are not from the Fredericton area. I'm actually in Woodstock right now. Um, and speaking of which, I would love to see where people are from. I know people came and joined us uh, later. So if you can tell me where you're from, I would love that. And I also would love to see what you create here. So these are two white pens and these make an opaque white gel ink over top of your drawing. Um, I really like this one. This is a Uniball um, signal. And uh, yeah, the, again, inexpensive art material that they last a long time and they um they're they have multiple uses so i am going to where is endeavors located endeavors is on queen street in um in fredericton right across from the craft college and uh i i promise you that that you would get the the highest level of service if you called and asked them for any of these materials. They're wonderful folks. So it's gonna be a little bit more difficult for you to see me draw, but I'm going to, uh, we'll test this out and I will, hi Sharon, uh, Shannon, sorry, in Rasse. She's doing this with three-year-old twins, God love you, uh, keep your Chardonnay filled. So I'm going to get, um, Quinn to turn the camera around and uh, try and video from the top here and see if you can uh, watch my hands so that maybe it's a little bit easier for you. And you're going to be in selfie mode there for a second. Sure. Yeah. So I'm cheating. I'm bringing up just an image on my screen of a whale. This looks pretty whale-y to me. So, oh, this is a big thick one. Let me use the thin one first. So this is just freehand. Nobody is expecting uh, a high art practice from this. They are just gonna be really, really excited that they got mail that wasn't a bill. So this guy is super wrinkly and bumpy and that's cool because that goes with our paint theme here. Oh, he needs another fin. He cannot swim without a second fin. This will be catastrophic. So the other cool thing about these Micron pens, I can go back and forth between my, um, my black pen and my white. Tracy is in Lincoln, I see. Good morning, Tracy. And I knew Sandra was in the Woodstock area. So I'm going to go in with my white. This is not a have to. It's just fun. It adds highlights and interest. Maybe a little shine in his eye here. In some places, the white actually really helps you if you've got darker um, colors that you've used. Because sometimes you have to rely on those highlights.
So then I'm going to take my brush marker and um, go around the outside edge and just redefine it a little bit. Maybe make, he's got kind of a squinty eye, this humpback whale, he does. I just go around the outside edge just because I like to not because that's a rule you do whatever you want to and I really really want to see I can't see you guys and I would really love to see what you make so if you um, get finished here and you finish up this morning or this afternoon or right now even if you're working along with me I, I would love to see what you create please take a picture and post it to the the Facebook page. I promise you that everybody at the, um, the UNB Art Center will be thrilled to see what you create as well. So in the last few minutes here, first of all, don't forget to sign it because this is a masterpiece and they all are. So make sure you make your mark on it. Oh, are we still there? I have, okay. Sorry, we had a signal interruption happen. I was, I was panicked. I thought that we lost everybody. Okay, so the very last thing that I want to finish up with, about a third of the way over, you just draw a vertical line. And then I'm probably a little more particular than other people, but I just make a mark every quarter inch. This is your address line. And, um, and then you can draw a line across it. Well, and I didn't do a good job following my own path, did I? So this is where we're going to put our stamp. So Lori asked how long I had been drawing for. Uh, I don't really remember not drawing. That um, My only thing I ever wanted to do for an activity is I wanted my dad to bring a, uh, a box from Sears that was a stove box or a fridge box out of there waste and uh, and I would make it into a fort and draw on the walls and then my mom would uh, cut out the windows and stuff and I lived in those boxes so we're gonna put the queen on there and that should uh, get us all set so that we can write our postcards, and connect with our families. So I'm going to get to turn that around again, Quinn. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, little workshop that we did here this morning, guys. We are going to do it next week, same time, 10 o'clock uh, on Wednesday morning. And a little tidbit. I want you to save your toilet paper rolls. Toilet paper rolls are very important right now and I want you to save them because we're gonna make use of them. So um, I really hope you enjoyed it. Please post, I wanna see what everybody made today. Have a great day.